Hey everyone, today's tutorial is for this little miniature crocheted pumpkin. So it works up super quickly, which is great since it's so close to Halloween already. So all you need to make this pumpkin are yarn in orange, brown, and green. I used worsted weight, you can use whatever weight you'd like. A five millimeter crochet hook or whatever size you need based on the weight of yarn that you choose. And then your normal Amiga Rumi things like a stitch marker, scissors, tapestry needle, stuffing, all of that good stuff. Also, I have the written pattern linked in the description below. It's on my blog if you'd like to read along rather than watch along. All right, with all that said, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so let's get started on the pumpkin. So I'm gonna be using this orange colored yarn and I'm gonna begin by forming a magic ring. If you need a quick refresher on how to tie a magic ring, I've recently posted my right and left hand tutorial on how to get that formed. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop that in here so you can click if you need the refresher. All right, so I have my magic ring formed and I'm ready to start in on round one, which is to put six single crochet stitches inside of our magic ring. And don't forget, we're gonna be working in the ring and over the tail that we used to tie it. All right, I'm gonna mark that first stitch as well. Okay, I've got all six of my single crochet stitches and I'm ready to do the magic part of my magic ring. I'll give that tail a tug to close off that first round. And I'm ready for round two, where we're gonna be increasing in each stitch. So two single crochet stitches in each stitch from round one, which is gonna give us 12 stitches total at the end of round two. So there's my first single crochet stitch. I'm gonna go back through that same stitch to finish my increase. So I've got two stitches coming out of the same hole from round one. All right, so there's my last increase for round two. I'm gonna give my magic ring tail one final tight tug, flip my work over, and trim that tail short, but not off. I just want it out of my way, so I'm gonna discard that. And that sets me up for round three, where we're gonna start by putting one single crochet stitch in the first stitch of our round. So there's my first single crochet stitch. And then I'm gonna follow that by putting an increase in the second stitch of my round. So again, two single crochet stitches coming out of the same stitch from the previous round. And that's everything inside of those asterisks. I'm gonna repeat that pattern of one single crochet stitch, one increase, six times total, which is gonna give me 18 stitches at the end of my round. So there's one repetition. I'll go to my next stitch and put one single crochet stitch. Next stitch I'm gonna increase. So there's that second repetition. I'm just gonna keep repeating that one single crochet stitch, one increase, until I'm all the way around. All right, so there's the end of round three for me. I'm ready for round four. So for round four, we're gonna be putting one single crochet stitch in the first two stitches of the round and then increasing. So that's our new pattern that we're gonna be repeating. So here's my first single crochet stitch. Put one in the next stitch of the round. So you can see that's one, two, and then an increase. So there's that first asterisk repetition. I'm gonna repeat that another five times for a total of six, which is also gonna give me 24 stitches at the end of this round. So one single crochet stitch, two single crochet stitches, increase.
So that's the end of round four. So for rounds five through nine, we're just gonna be adding one single crochet stitch to every stitch all the way around. So I personally like to leave my stitch marker in and then count the amount of rows above that marker, but you can also move your marker at the beginning of each round to help you keep track as well. So I'm gonna leave my marker in place and I'm gonna work through each of these rounds just putting one single crochet stitch in each stitch all the way around. All right, so you can see I left my stitch marker in and that way I can count the stitches to the left of it and then up the rows to see if I've got all five of my rounds. So one, two, three, four, five, I do. So I'm ready to move on to round 10. So round 10, we're gonna begin by putting one single crochet stitch in the next two stitches. So I'll place that first. I'm gonna slip my stitch marker out and put it in that stitch that I just made and then make my second single crochet stitch. And then I need to decrease. So these two stitches, I need to single crochet them together. So I'll go through that first one, yarn under and draw up a loop. Go through the next one, yarn under and draw up a loop. Then yarn over and draw through all three, which decreases the amount of stitches. And I'm gonna continue that pattern of one single crochet stitch in the next two, decrease five more times for a total of six repetitions. All right, so there's my last decrease, which wraps up round 10. I'm ready for round 11, where I'm gonna put one single crochet stitch in the next stitch of my round. And then of course, mark that stitch. And then one decrease. Then repeat that pattern of one single crochet stitch, one decrease, another five times. All right, so that wraps up round 11. Before I move on to round 12, which is my last round, I'm gonna pull this loop on my hook long, and take my hook out, and I'm gonna add some stuffing to the inside of my pumpkin here, being really careful not to accidentally stuff my loop or my working yarn in. So we're not gonna overstuff the pumpkin. We need to put in enough stuffing so that it's sort of a sphere, but not so much that it's really firm because we're gonna be sewing this pumpkin to have its wedges. And I find if it's overly stuffed, it's hard to get a good shape. So stuff just enough so that's still kind of squashy. It's not super firm. All right, so I have mine stuffed, so I'm ready to continue on in my pattern. I'm gonna put my hook back through that loop and draw the tail down. And I'll make my last round, which is round 12, where we're just gonna be decreasing in each stitch all the way around. All right, so there was my last decrease, so I'm ready to fasten off. I'm gonna take my stitch marker out of that first decrease that I made and then slip stitch to that first decrease. So I'm gonna take my hook and go through, yarn under and draw up a loop. Then take that loop I just created and draw it through the only loop left on my hook to slip stitch. And then we need a long tail for this pumpkin. So let's reserve ourselves at least 24 inches of this tail. Trust me, you don't wanna run out. It's a pain in the neck to try to get more. So we give that a snip. And then we're gonna pull that slip stitch that we made 
until that long tail we made passes through it as well. And then tighten that slip stitch down by tugging on that tail. All right, so next we need to sew the pumpkin closed and give it its essential pumpkin shape. So we'll take that tail that we cut and we need to thread it through the eye. I would recommend using a sharp metal tapestry needle for this because we're going to be sewing into the stuffing and I find if you use a plastic one, sometimes it's hard to kind of dig in. So I'm going to thread my metal tapestry needle with my tail. And then to close off this last round, we're going to be sewing around this last round's front loops. So I'll take my needle and I'm going to sew up through the one that's to this side of the slip knot that I've tied. And pull, rotate, so from bottom to top through the front loop only here. Rotate. And we're gonna do that through all six of those stitches. Alright, so once you've sewn through all six of those front loops, we can pull that tail to cinch that last round closed. And then to secure that cinch, we're going to tie a surface knot. We'll take our tail and make a little loop here over the surface of our work. Then we need to snag that last stitch that we sewed through. So I'm just going to get some of that stitch here and then pass underneath that loop. So I'm sewing up through the center of that loop. Then I'm going to hold the loop onto the fabric of the pumpkin and pull that tail. And you can see the loop's going to start to wrap itself around. So just pull really gently until that loop forms a nice tight knot. All right, so we are ready to start sewing the wedges of our pumpkin. We're going to start by taking our needle and sewing it down through that round that we cinched closed and up through the center of the magic ring round at the top of the pumpkin. So send your tapestry needle up through that magic ring round. And then if you look at the top of our pumpkin, along where we made our increases, we have this sort of starburst shape. You can see these lines here. We're gonna start by sewing wedges along those lines. So I'm going to sew to the 12 o'clock position here, kind of just straight down, rotate my pumpkin, and then send my needle back through that stitch here, that cinch at the bottom of the pumpkin, and up back through the magic ring at the top. And pull. And then we're going to cinch this stitch, not too tight, so just give it a little tug to sort of cinch. And then we're ready to sew our next wedge. So if you look kind of over here at the next side, we'll bring it down the same way we did the first wedge. So up through that cinch at the bottom and up through the magic ring opening at the top. Give it a little cinch. So along the next little ridge here. It's okay if you don't get it right along the ridge. Every pumpkin's a little different. Alright, so here's my last little ridge. You can see it sort of makes this star burst shape when we've sewed. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six stitches total. I'm going to go back down and then up back through the magic ring at the top. And you can see why I recommend a metal needle. It's a lot of stuffing to sew through. Here it goes. Alright, so I've got all of those 
cinches, wedges sewn, and I'm ready to fasten off the rest of this tail. And you can see I have a lot of extra, but it's way nicer to have extra. So I'm gonna go ahead and tie another surface knot. So I'm gonna make a little O or ring shape here on the top of my pumpkin. And then I need to grab just a little bit of the fabric of the pumpkin. So I'm gonna kind of dig and grab one of the stitches and then sew up through that O or ring shape that I made, just like I did at the bottom of the pumpkin. And by holding that ring close to the surface of my work, the tail's gonna pull through and it'll start to wrap itself around and tie a pretty nice tight knot. Then we're gonna sew down into the fabric right underneath where that knot is and out through a random stitch on the body of the pumpkin. And when you pull, it's gonna pull that knot. See, I'm pulling pretty tight. It pulls the knot to the inside. Then for extra security, I'm gonna weave this tail in another time. So I'm sewing back down through where I came up and out through just another spot on the pumpkin. All right, so then we can unthread our tapestry needle. And by pulling tightly on that tail that we've got outside of our pumpkin and trimming, we weave the excess in and we can discard what we didn't. And then my favorite part of the pumpkin is kind of giving it a squish along the outside so that it kind of gets a little taller here, which is why we don't put too much stuffing in. All right, so there is the pumpkin body done. Let's move on to the next part of the pattern. All right, so next up is the leaf and we're gonna be using this darker green color. And we need to begin by tying a slip knot and chaining. So let's get our slip knot formed first. All right, so now that we have our slip knot formed, we're ready to go ahead and start in on the first part of our leaf, which is to chain five stitches. So one, two, three, four, five. All right, so now that we have all five of those chains created, we're going to place our first stitch, which is a slip stitch, in the second chain from our hook. So not counting the one on our hook. So one, two, we're gonna slip stitch in this second chain from our hook. Then in the next chain, we're going to add one single crochet stitch. In the third chain, we're gonna put one single crochet stitch and one half double crochet stitch. So we're gonna wrap the yarn around our hook, go through that same chain, yarn under and draw up a loop, and then yarn over and draw through all three. And then in the last chain, which is technically our slip stitch, we're gonna be placing three half double crochet stitches. That's gonna help us swing around the back side of that chain so we can begin working up the other side to form the other half of the leaf. So again, starting by wrapping our yarn around our hook, going through that slip stitch that we made, the slip knot, yarn under, drop a loop, yarn over and draw through all three. We'll make our second single crochet stitch in that same slip knot. And then our last, and you can see it's kind of helping me turn my leaf so I can work up the other side here. And then I'm gonna weave my slip knot tail in as I work up the other side of the leaf. So I'm ready to place that next stitch, which is gonna be one half double crochet and one single crochet stitch in this chain. So it's the second chain here on this side. So I'll start by wrapping my yarn around going through that chain stitch here. It's the same one that we put the single crochet and half double crochet stitch on the other side. So we're sort of mirroring, mirroring it here. So there's my half double crochet stitch and my single crochet stitch. And in that next chain, we're gonna put one single crochet stitch And then in this last chain, we're going to slip stitch. And then to close off the top of the leaf here, 
we're going to grab the front loop of that first slip stitch that we made and the chain that we skipped over whenever we started the leaf. So grabbing that front loop and that chain that we skipped over. So slipping through both of those. And we're going to single crochet in that. So yarn under and draw up a loop. Then yarn over and draw through both. And then to finish off the leaf, we're going to be slip stitching down the centers of the chains here. So I'm going to rotate my leaf so that it's pointing upwards here. And then I'm going to slip my hook through that first hole, which is that chain that we made those slip stitches in. And I'll yarn under, draw up through the center of my leaf, and then draw the loop I created through the only other loop left on my hook. I'm just going to keep slip stitching. I'm going to go through the next chain space and yarn under. There's my second slip stitch. Go through that next chain space. So here's this last one, which has got those three half double crochet stitches inside of it. And then we're going to go through the loops on the middle of the half double crochets. So the second one that we made swinging around the bottom of the chain. And we'll make our last slip stitch through this stitch itself. All right, and then we are ready to fasten off. And we need to leave a little bit of a tail on this leaf because we're going to use that tail to sew the leaf on. So reserve yourself six to eight inches. I always like to have a little extra just in case I run out. I hate having to add more later. And give it a snip. And then I'm going to yarn over with that tail and draw it through and then draw it all the way through until the tail I trimmed passes through as well. And then tighten it down. I'm also going to trim the slip knot tail that I used. I already wove it in. I wove it in as I went. So I'll trim that and discard. And that wraps up the leaf. All right, so we've got our stem left to make and I'm gonna be working with this dark brown yarn and I'm gonna begin by tying a slip knot and chaining. All right, now that I have my slip knot formed, I'm gonna chain four stitches. So one, two, three, four. And then in the second chain for my hook, never counting the one on our hook, so one, two, I'm gonna place a slip stitch. And then just continue slip stitching down in the remaining two chains. All right, I'm at, the, I'm at the slip knot that I made to start and I'm ready to fasten off. Stem works up pretty quick, it's nice. So we're gonna trim six inches or so. And then I like to pull the slip knot tail and the tail that I just cut through that loop on my hook. So I'm gonna yarn over with both of them and pull them both through and then keep pulling until they both pass through. And then I'm gonna tighten the slip knot tail first and then tighten the longer of the two tails, which wraps up the stem. All right, so we are ready to assemble our pumpkin now. So let's grab all of the little bits that we've worked on, starting with the pumpkin and the stem. And we're gonna start with the tail from our slip knot first. I like to weave this in because it helps anchor the stem to the pumpkin and takes care of the weaving in at the beginning, which I find is kind of nice to not have to worry about at the end. So again, with that same tapestry needle used to sew with our pumpkin, I'm gonna thread that slip knot tail through the eye of it, and then sew it down through the center of my pumpkin here, right where all those cinches are, and straight through to the bottom of the pumpkin. And then pull it pretty tight, and then unthread. So you can see that kind of anchors the stem to our pumpkin, and makes it so that we can sew with the longer of the two tails. So I'll thread that through as well. And I need to grab some of the fabric of the pumpkin. So I'm gonna snag some of the stuff here, kind of where that tail's going down into the pumpkin. So I'll sew a little of the fabric. And then sew through the base of the stem right where it meets our pumpkin.
And then I need to grab a little more of the fabric of the pumpkin, so so really close to where that stem is. I'm going to get this stitch here. And we're ready to tie a knot to secure the stem. So just like we did with the cinches with the bottom of the pumpkin, we're going to make another surface knot. So make a little O shape. And then I'm going to sew a little of the stitch that I'm coming out of here and up through that ring. And then let it wrap itself around and tie a knot. And I'm going to sew down into the center of the pumpkin underneath where that stem is and out through a random stitch here on the body. I pulled pretty tight to take that knot to the inside. Then we can unthread our tapestry needle and pull both of these tails pretty tightly when we trim. So here's the slip knot tail and the longer of the two. And then give your pumpkin a smush to kind of send those remaining tails to the inside. And that's the stem attached. So next up we need to get the leaf attached. So I like my leaf to kind of be right along where my stem is. So I'll set it right alongside that stem. And then thread the tapestry needle with that tail left over from the leaf. And we're going to send the stitch next to the stem and then out towards the outside of the pumpkin. So I'm going to kind of grab some of the fabric here. And then we want the slip stitches we made down the center of the leaf to be facing up. That's the front of the leaf. And then we're going to sew up through some of the slip stitches here. This is the one that's going through that chain that all those half double crochet stitches are coming out of. I'm sewing up through the center of that slip stitch. And then I'm going to sew down through the pumpkin again. And I'm going to come up through this slip stitch here. So I'm kind of grabbing some of the fabric of the pumpkin. And then I'm going to come up through that slip stitch above where we came up through the first time. It's going to help anchor the leaf to the pumpkin so it doesn't flip upwards. You can see. Then we're going to go down through this last slip stitch here and make it so that we're underneath where our leaf is because we're going to hide the green knot underneath the leaf. Alright, so I'm going to flip the leaf up a little bit so I can work on tying my surface knot. So I'll make another little loop. Grab some of the fabric of the pumpkin right underneath where that leaf is. And then wrap around. Then I'm going to sew down through the fabric of the pumpkin underneath that knot and out through the bottom. And then pull tight to send the green knot to the inside. Then we can unthread and trim that green yarn and then give the pumpkin one final smoosh to send the remainder of the tail to the inside. All right, and with the leaf attached, your pumpkin is complete. So as always, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And if you would consider giving my channel a subscription, I'd be delighted to have you on board with me. Your subscriptions tell me you like what I do and you'd like to see more. Okay, thanks for watching and happy crafting.